Hi, I'm Lance Schrader, Customer Technology Specialist out of our Marysville location. And I'm glad that you can join me as I go over many planner settings. If you have any questions after these videos, please contact your local landmark location. In this video, we're going to talk about the active pneumatic downforce system. I'm going to start off with some of the components. Up here on the tank, starting on some of the components, Right here we have our main pressure sensor. We have our solenoids. And then our pressure sensors for each rank. In this case it's a 1795, so that's why we have two. Over here we have our air compressor. And before each season we want to replace the oil, change the oil, and that takes air compressor oil. And then about every other day we want to come up here and check this sight gauge make sure that our oil levels is at the correct level. We have our air filter here and we want to replace that every season as well as check to make sure it's clean uh, twice a week. The last thing on the tank that we want to do is we want to drain the water out of the tank about every other day. At the row unit component wise we're going to start off with our airbag. We want to make sure at the beginning of the season we charge our airbags Make sure there's no cuts or leaks, as well as at these fittings, make sure they're not leaking. We also have gauge wheel sensors, and those are on certain rows depending upon your configuration. Some planters have three, some planters have five. In this case, on this 1795 planter, there's five sensors, three on the front rank and two on the back rank. And on those same rows, you're gonna find your ride quality nodes. On electric drive planters, that's actually housed inside this row unit controller. And on Seedstar XP planters, it's mounted to the row unit here on the right side of the row unit. So looking at a seed trench after we've gone through, tied the closing wheels up in this example here, but this is what a good seed trench looks like. So we have some firm sidewalls. It's defined, it's not crumbled in. If I would take and kind of stick my seed digger down in there, it kind of comes in here. So it's not just totally compacted and not hard. Obviously soil conditions and soil types will affect this, but this is what we want to see for good seed to soil contact. And that gives our seed the best chance at producing maximum yield. An example of too little downforce is when the seed trench just pretty much crumbles really easily and you can push it in. So there's chances of pockets of air and not very good seed to soil contact and more importantly probably not achieving your correct depth. A good way of checking our downforce margin is by getting out and checking the resistance of the gauge wheels. Now we want to do this as we're planting and come to a stop with the planter in the ground. So if we have too small or too little margin, this gauge wheel is just going to turn freely like this. If we can't turn this gauge wheel at all, even no matter how hard we try or we can barely move it, that means we have probably too much margin. What we want to see for the proper amount of margin is there's some resistance on this gauge wheel but we still can turn it. Once again we want to check our seed trench and see how that looks as well to confirm what we're seeing here. Now I'd like to go over some screen operation for the active pneumatic downforce system. Shown here is on a seed star 4 planter with a gen 4 screen. First, I want to make sure that the system 
is enabled, the active system is enabled. And I can do that by touching the gauge wheels on a planner page. And then I can go to my downforce margin. And then in the lower left, I can turn my active manic downforce on. Another thing that I like to look at when I do that is this pie graph up in the top left. This top left portion of the pie graph means I have the sensors available for my active mode, and that is filled in. The top right is filled in when I have planter and tractor speed. And then the bottom one is filled in when the planter is down. When all three are filled in, it will say engaged. If for some reason one of the pieces aren't filling in, we can use that as a diagnostic tool, knowing which pieces of the pie represent what, to diagnose the issue. To adjust your margin, you can do that by hitting the plus and minus buttons here on the right to wherever you would like to set the margin at. If you would like to change the margin alarms, you can do that by touching here in the bottom portion of the screen and look at your percentages for the high margin, the low margin, the ground contact low, and the ride quality low. If I wanted to change the increments that every time you hit the plus or minus button, the number increment it increases or decreases by, I can do that by hitting this top arrow and then scrolling down once and changing my increment adjustment. And that's found in the advanced settings. A couple other things we may look at. I like to run on this page. We can see that I have three sensors. The planner that is showing here is actually a 1795 split row planner but only 16 rows are enabled, so three sensors are shown. The ground contact below that, those bars, it will show a black bar on those rows, as well as an average percentage, as well as the row that has the lowest percentage. Now those percentages, we want those to be in the mid to high 90s on the ground contact, if not 100%. One thing that I would caution is if it's always 100%, we potentially may actually have too much downforce where that row unit is just being slammed into the ground all the time. But we want to make sure that that number is in that high 90 range so that we get good seed depth and placement. I can touch kind of the double arrow down with a looks like a fork, and that is the actual downforce applied if you would like to look at that. The active pneumatic system max is out at about 400 pounds. If I'd want to look at my ride quality, I could touch and hit the three buttons in the top right. And then I can look at my ride quality and touch that. And it's going to show the bar graphs as well. One thing to mention here is on our downforce margin here, we want those bars to hover around the center that means we are achieving the margin that we have it set at. Some diagnostics and calibrations that we may need to perform can be found in the tools. And then we'll go to planner diagnostics and calibrations. And under diagnostics, there's a quite a selective list here. I can look at the air compressor system. I can look at my gauge wheel downforce. And so I can look at the supply voltage, the input voltage. If for some reason one of these sensors goes bad, I can disable it. Right now I'm just going to leave them all enabled. Like I said, this is as a 1795 planter, and so it's going to have five sensors. One thing important to note is that on any pneumatic system, the sensors are going to give feedback and then the system does an average of those sensors. And so 
there's not individual row control. It's all an average the same across the whole planter. Or if you have a 1795 in this case, the rear rank and the front rank. Another thing that we can look at here in the diagnostics is our PDF system. We can look at our pressure sensor there, as well as our ride quality. If the gauge wheel downforce sensors seem to be erratic, we can always re-perform this gauge wheel downforce calibration. And we need to have the planner up to do that. We just hit begin calibration. It gives us some prerequisites that need to be met. Then we can hit next and then hit next again. And it'll tell us the calibration is successful. And then we can just X out of that. Back on the home page, we can set modules up on the Seedstar 4 planter to adjust the gauge wheels. Over here on the right, we can touch that and we can use our plus or minus to adjust it as needed. If, as you're going, for some reason, this bar right here flashes orange or red, it usually means one of these sensors is not within spec of what you have set it. So if we hit the, the tiles in the top left, what that does in our Seedstar 4 system is it will alert us that something's going on that we can dig further into. You can also look at each row by touching it, and you can see the downforce margin as well as the downforce, the ground contact, ride quality, as well as several other things with population seed spacing. To get back out of that, we can touch any of these modules and it'll bring us back to where we want to be. The Gen 4 screen is fairly easy to navigate. If there's something that you see that you want to touch and change, just touch it and it should bring up another menu. One last thing that I want to go over in the active pneumatic downforce is the pause feature. The pause feature can be used to hold the current down pressure for 10 seconds or whatever you have the time amount set to. That can be found over in the module on the bottom right. And when you do that, it will hold the downforce as well as the margin for 10 seconds. One instance where you might want to use this is if you have say 30 feet of a vast soil change that you don't want to either have to fill air or dump air really fast, you can use that pause feature because the active pneumatic downforce system won't be able to achieve something that fast like the hydraulic downforce system will.